Welcome to this week's Ask GMBN, where we get to answer all those beautiful questions that you've been typing in the comment section down below, hashtag Ask GMBN. And we've got Doddy to help us answer some questions Hola. that you guys have been sending us. Do you want us to kick it off? Hell yeah. Okay, so first up this week's from Vincent Romeo. Hey guys, loving the show, learn a lot, and you guys cover most questions I want to know. However, but what I'd really like to know is why steerer tubes don't have a keyway and stems have a key, so the alignment between handlebars and wheels is always perfect. Mm. I doubt a small keyway in the steerer tube would degrade its strength um, that much, if at all. Mm. Interesting point. Yeah, so if you guys don't know what a key and a keyway is, is basically you've got a groove within your stem or stirrer mm -hmm. and you can slide in a piece of metal that will lock in whatever mechanism that you want to have locked in, like your stem, for instance, on there. Uh, what happens if you crash and it rips that whole thing out? Well, before we look at that, if you think of dropper posts, yes, they have keys. Yeah, well, they yeah. use exactly that system, but we all know the dropper posts develop a little bit, a bit of play. wobble over time, and that's because the keys are made of a softer material than the post, mm. so it won't damage the post. Uh, it's a cool idea, but I don't think it's the right one for a steerer tube. Uh, there is a company called, I think they're called Tag, that are making a stem yep. that's got like a little a little slot. Let's just call it a post box. Yeah. Uh, for now, and then what they're trying to do is get manufacturers that make forks like Fox or Rock Shocks to anodize onto the fork steerer tube a white line, and then when mm. you put your stem on, it lines up, and you then you just tighten it up. So I think actually this may well be an industry standard um, in the future. There you go. I think it's a great idea, but as for the key, I think given the crashes we have, there'll mm. be too much damage. There'll be too occur. much play, and you'll, you'll yeah. write off your stirrer, and you'll write off your stem. Yeah, you could even bend or break your bars you as could, well as yeah. all sorts. Yeah, yeah. It's mm. better to let it move yeah. if it needs to. Exactly. But yeah, cool idea though. Yeah, great question. Next one. Next one's coming in from Keiju Blue. Should I try backflip? <coughs> Should I try and backflip over my garage blindfolded? Yeah, 100%. I, I, well, do you know, <laughs> uh, no, I, I would. No, no. <laughs> but not blindfolded. I would not. No. That's just ridiculous. And whilst we can't endorse this, do it. <laughs> if if yeah. you do, send it in. Could you do a backflip blindfolded? Yeah, I reckon Could so. Could you do a backflip blindfolded over a garage? I wouldn't want to try that. What about over a pit of crocodiles? Fluffy crocodiles, yeah, maybe. No, no, no. A hundred duck sized horses? A hundred duck sized horses? Or a hundred. Horse sized ducks? No. That'd be worse, wouldn't it? Yeah. That'd be well, quite a big jump. Are we yeah. getting off a question of that? Yeah. Well, I don't, well, I, we, we wouldn't endorse it. You probably it. shouldn't, but we'd love to see it if you did. Yeah, please. Mm. Please yeah. send it in. How's that? <laughs> uh, next up from Kyle Bryson. Um, Ask GMBN, would you recommend Shimano or Crank Brothers for clipless pedals for someone who's never used pedals due to the difference in float between the two? Oh. Does the float affect clipping out? Okay, so I am majority, majority a flat pedal rider. Yeah. Um, I ride Crank Brothers and I've ridden Shimano before. Mm -hmm. uh, Shimano is really direct, isn't it? There's yeah. not much play within there, yeah. but with Crank Brothers, it does feel like a flat pedal. You could definitely move you around. You can definitely more, move yeah. around, especially you can flip your chip underneath your shoe and that can eliminate the amount of flow you have within yeah, that Yeah, I think float. it's five and 15 as yeah. standard. Or you can make it pretty solid. But you know, they've also got new cleats available with zero. Oh. So you can have them like feel direct like Shimano if you like that, yep. or you can have the float that you like. Yeah. So you can have it both ways. Um, with Shimano, you get to adjust the spring, like the uh, the jaws of the mm. pedal. So you can have it like weak for clipping in and out or really strong. So some people really like that, but I think I'm with you on, mm. on the crank feel. I've ridden both over the I've years and both. kind of settled yep. on crank mostly. There you go. Um, but yeah, there you go. Well, he has a video on how to maintain your clipless pedals if you're struggling and if they're a bit worn. Check this video out. In this video, we are looking at doing a quick overhaul on your clipless type pedals. Now, I'm choosing to use two of the most common options out there, one from Shimano or one from Crank Brothers. In this particular case, it's a Shimano XTR trail pedal and the Crank Brothers equivalent, which is the Mallet E, so that's a Mallet Enduro pedal. So this is a reference video on taking them apart, giving them a good clean and keeping them in good condition. Generally, they're pretty good and they'll last quite a long time, but of course, as with any bike part, give it a bit of TLC, it's gonna keep going for longer. Oof, pretty, pretty good, yeah. Actually, yeah. yeah if I'm gonna, I, session, so. yeah, yeah, you're pretty good at explaining <laughs> stuff, Doddy. You're pretty good. Right, next question is coming in from Grim Reaper. Hopefully it's not him himself. Uh, where do you see pedaled bikes and e-bikes in the next 10 years? 
Hell, that's a good question, and that's a big question. Do you mean pedal bikes as in push non, bikes? Non e-bikes. Non e-bikes, yeah, non-assisted yeah. pedal for, bikes. For today, let's do what they do on EMBN, and let's call them e-bikes and acoustic bikes. Yeah. Just for today, okay. I think it's a bit weird, but uh, acoustic. Yeah, as in mm. like, yeah, don't no electric. Yeah, I actually get it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think um, they're going to merge together quite a lot. You're going to see a lot of e-bikes getting a lot lighter, so they're far nearer to what we have today. Mm -hmm as e-bikes because at the moment there's from my point of view there's too much of a division uh, you're, you're one or the other yeah. uh, unless you're very rich and you can afford to have both um, and they both have they both offer totally different things i think e-bikes are incredible what mm -hmm. you can do on them no doubt mm -hmm. but i still like pedaling i mean you pedal and it's pedal assist but i like pedaling a light bike i yeah. like feeling the terrain and i think e-bikes numb you from that yeah somewhat um i'm not really sure where Mount, regular mountain bikes or acoustic bikes are going to go. E-bikes will definitely get a lot lighter, they're going to have a lot more range, there's a lot more you're going to be able to do with them. Um, but regular bikes, I don't know, they're just they're getting lighter, stronger, more efficient all the time. I think they're going to become a lot more electric within potentially gears, like they yeah. are already. Yeah, with their like, the access system. Yeah. Making it look at, as sleek as possible, mm -hmm. slim as possible. We might lose brake lines at some point. We might, but it's already gone, some yeah. of them. Yeah, this, well they're doing internal, We're which doing is internal. going like it did with road bikes, yeah. but uh, I think at some point someone might dare to try that. That's where I think it might yeah, go. It's done it in the car world, so I guess yeah. you could do something, but. Maybe chainless, imagine that. Chainless would be nice. Yeah, get rid of the chain, get rid of the cassette, and go to gearbox really mm. um that's cool but the problems we've had so far with gearboxes is the friction basically we've still got to overcome well. that yeah the, although you the weight's need a motor kind of in a good place that. as well yeah but um yeah it'd be interesting um maybe we'll pick this up at the end of the year actually yeah, yeah. with uh what we predict is going to come because yeah. after all the big bike shows we're going to be able to know a little bit more about that it's a good question mm. a lot more in the future to mm. come for sure okay so this one's interesting especially for you blake so this is from make eckard does riding a motorbike um, improve your riding on a mountain bike um, and vice versa? Yes. I've done motocross, I've done enduro in the past. I've, I've, you know, I've tampered between going between the two and I've recently just been riding a nice KTM for a moto, uh, zip moto wheels we did. Uh, going from one to the other, straight away I felt very comfortable throwing a mountain bike around after riding a big heavy bike yeah, right. in the dirt. The way the bike moves and characteristics of that, transferring onto a mountain bike, makes it feel a lot more fun. You feel like you've got a lot more grip because you're trusting a huge motorbike wheel. Then you're like, right, I've got the grip. Yeah, try it here. It does. I think there's a good video involved between the two. Yeah, like a cross training. Like a thing. cross training thing. Hmm. Going from a motocross guy and then a real fast mountain bike guy and see what happens. I reckon you should do that video for GMBN and I reckon on the same lines, Jones or Chris should do the same one with a trials motorbike yes, and an e-bike. and an e-bike. Because I reckon there's a real good crossover with them as well. That is a very good well. crossover, good, good idea. Good idea, thanks for yeah. the ideas. Thank you. Got a question for you, Doddy. It's coming from Trisha McIntyre. says, I got a new 29er, MTB. Congratulations. Uh, front brakes took 15 minutes to bed in perfectly. Back About one, right. yeah. back one, listen to this, back one didn't take at all to bed uh, in. Um, yeah. Tried everything, wiping the rotors. Will I be better off buying new pads, new disc? Hmm. What, what should he do? Yeah, I feel your pain here. So there's a few things that can happen when you're trying to bed pads in. Well, firstly, you want to make sure there's not been a leak of any kind on your brake. Even if it's a brand new bike, it doesn't take much for just like the banjo nut to come undone. Even the tiniest bit, a tiny bit of oil can seep out onto the pads. And if that's the case, then you're not really going to rescue them. So first up, have a good inspection. Take the wheel out, take the pads out, inspect everything and make sure there's no leak. Um, if it's not leaked, then you still could have had contaminated pads or a contaminated rotor, perhaps from the bike shop or during transit or a number of reasons. Um, if that's the case, you might be able to rescue it. So you can clean everything with isopropyl alcohol and get some really coarse, uh, like a glass paper or a sandpaper, and mm. rub them both down so they're nice and like a abrasive almost, and then start bedding in from fresh. However, it doesn't always work if they have been badly contaminated. Um, so what we're going to do, we're actually going to throw you to Henry's brake hacks video, so that might give you a few more ideas. But definitely try them before spending the money, because it's better to do it for free, isn't it? Bad feeling brakes can completely throw out a whole bike for me. It's, it's really, really important to get a nice positive feel. And although it's a very subjective thing, how you might want them, 
there's no reason you can't maximize your brakes. So what we're gonna look at is ways to fine tune them without reaching for the bleed kit. If you have really cooked your brakes, you know, the tried and tested tip, don't be afraid just to get some sandpaper there and scrub up the rotor, not in the direction of travel. Um, same again with your pads. If your pads are ever like shiny or anything like that, just, just take the edge off and that's gonna really increase bite and braking performance. Pretty good hacks, huh? Yeah, yeah, he's, really good he's hacks. good at those. If he you like your good. hacks, keep an eye on Henry. Race mechanic knows okay. it all. Right, so next up's from Adam Carabay. I want the Canyon talk, but Ooh. it doesn't have a bottle gauge mount, ah. um, which I currently use a lot. Yeah, fair enough, like if you use them, it is annoying if you don't get them. Um, is there a bottle cage with straps that I can use? I uh, can't find anything out there. I mean, there's a few floating around. Yeah, hey. there's a few, but you know, you, you have a water bottle full of water, that thing's gonna spin around your bike. And probably won't stay in one spot. No, that's very true. Like, you can though, there's, there's a Topeak make a mount called the Versa mount. Oh. That's pretty good. Uh, you, you know, like Blake says, they're never quite as good as using like the proper bosses on a bike, but it could definitely hold a bottle. Um, another one to look at is by Fidlock. Uh, they're the guys that make the magnetic fastenings, so you don't actually have the bottle cage on there. The bottle itself has the two magnets on mm, the bottom, yeah. um, and it locks in. They're really good, and they do a kit and they you to strap them on. You could do it on the top tube, you could even do it on a seat post, not that you would on your bike. Um, you could do it maybe under the bottom bracket, so it's just dangling underneath. Um, plenty of good options, although... What about one of those bum bags, yeah, just say, for like a, a water pack. bottle? Yeah. Just for a water bottle, yeah, you can get that. There's various brands, Mavic do them, Camelback do them, Evoc do them. They all make really slender, small mm. ones. Just for like a you say, Just for a water bottle, uh, maybe your car keys. Mm. Definitely check those out, well worth a look. Very good question. Next one coming in from Mark Ryan. Hi guys, hello Mark, how hello. are you? Uh, 2019 is the year for me to master the wheelie, or a mm. manual. I have a boss, I have a caliber boss nut, my bike, comes yep. with 80 mil stem. I'm struggling a little bit, but I'm still trying. Do you guys feel like my current stem is too long or should I make, you know, would it be a help if it was shorter? Um, I think it's to do with if the bike fits you or not, mm. not the stem as such. Um, if the bike fits you, then no, that's not the issue. Um, however, if you feel like your bike is too stretched, naturally you're gonna have more weight on the front wheel, which means mm. it's harder to pick up. You could try and put it a bit higher perhaps, or yeah. maybe have a, a higher rise bar on there. You don't want to make your bike too short yeah, that, if it kind of fits you. Bringing that stem in is going to bring your whole body position yeah. into your bike and make yeah. it a little bit short. And, and it might make it good for wheelies in the car park, but yeah. it'll be rubbish everything else. Yeah. Um, so I'd get used to it. Yeah, so it's, all, yeah, it's all about technique when you're doing the wheelie. Yeah. Getting the power down, getting your front wheel up, and it'll feel like you're going over the back, but that, that point where you feel like it's uncomfortable, it's where the point is where you should balance it and to keep it there you've got to make sure you just hover your finger over your rear brake because if you do feel like you're going to loop out grab a handful of that rear brake and it'll bring that in front fact, wheel down. In fact actually trying to loop out a few times first is mm. good because you know where it is. Know where it is. Uh, maybe try it in a field. Yeah. So if you do fall off it's not going to hurt so much mm -hmm. and slightly uphill helps. That's yeah it I does. Find. Going uphill makes it a lot more comfortable. Yeah it keeps the, you slower as well. Yeah and the front's up at a higher end is yeah. higher point as well. I'm, I'm pretty convinced that most people can learn to wheelie in a day. Yeah. If you find the right gradient and you get your gears sorted, um, if you've got a triple on your bike, go for middle and near the top, the back, so mm. quite a low gear, but not too low. Yeah. Maybe put your saddle down just a couple of inches. The lower it is, the harder it is, because the higher it is, the more over the rear balance over, point yeah. you are. Yeah. So it's easier to get your front wheel off the ground. Exactly. Yeah, like Blake says, like all about control with that back brake. Mm -hmm. Make sure. Good fun to learn though. It is practice, like, practice. Frustrating at first, but, yeah, then but when once you, you get it, a glimpse of it, oh. you're like, oh, I'm nearly there. It's good, it's good. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so next in's from Marco Coppola. Is it normal that with a hardtail, flat pedals, and not a bunch of technique, I can't nail technical sections because my feet keep bouncing and eventually fall off the pedals, leading to horrible situations? It tends to happen on bigger drop-offs that require pop. Um, uh, I'm fearing it because of shin hits. <laughs> uh, well, you ride the hardtail loads. I ride a hardtail a lot, and I have said in previous videos that when I'm gonna ride my hardtail hard in rough sections, I am gonna get clipped in. And I don't ride clipped in a lot, but when it comes to the hardtail, being clipped in does mm. help a lot because it keeps your feet in contact with your bike when you're going through rough sections. So that kind of answers your question, should I run clips on a hardtail to help? Mm. Yes, 100% 
for sure. Do you think it makes it a bit like uh, see a lighter on the bike as well? It does. The flats you tend to be quite not you, but people are quite hard yeah. on the bike. Yeah, like uh, even on a full suspension bike when I'm running flats, I do feel like I have to put a lot more pressure down, drop my heels a lot, just to keep my feet on the pedals, especially in rough sections. Mm. Even on a full sus, mm. now that can put a lot of pressure on your rear tire, which can cause punctures, can yeah. cause a lot of wreck things. Wreck your wheel. You can wreck your wheel. But having clipped in can make you, like you said, makes the bike a hell of a lot lighter yeah. and a lot more maneuverable as well. So yeah, yeah. give them a try. They're mm. good fun. We've done a video on this. I have, and uh, check this out. So with all that bouncing, bubbling, and blowing my feet off out on the trail whilst riding a hardtail, got me thinking being clipped in could be beneficial here. So I've got five tests I'm going to put to the test, and that is rocky, climby, techy, turny, and jumpy. So. Let's go. Okay, now it's time for correct me if I'm wrong. Got a great one for you. This is from Chris in Perry Woods in Kent. Ooh. So basically, sudden battle confidence meant I attempted a 360. It didn't go according to plan. The bike seemed to stop uh, midair, causing me to land backwards. Right. Let's have a look. See what goes wrong. Oh, I 100% see you straight away where you yep. went wrong. 100%. Now, the first thing when it comes to 360 is you should continuously look over your shoulder for whatever way you're spinning. So you're spinning to the right. It's the way I would spin, to the right. But when you're looking for doing a 360, you've got to constantly look around at your shoulder. Where you did there, wrong, is you went spinning, but you're doing this. And that's going to stop you straight away in your steps. Also, that jump is not the right place to do it. Doing it on a hip is correct, yes, to learn to get the spin, but you're spinning the wrong way for the hip. It feels like you need to spin to, to the, the left, left yeah. to actually get like a little 270 going, which will help you progress Naturally that 360. Naturally comes around that way. Exactly, yeah. yeah. But if you want to do it, fly is perfect for it, but constantly look over your shoulder, or your right shoulder. Constantly looking over your mm. shoulder will help you spin. And as soon as you get around, spot your landing and bring your whole bike around. Is there like a perfect jump, do you reckon, to practice this on? Um, I would have thought like out of a bomb hole to flat, To maybe? bomb hole to flat, yeah. yeah. Yeah, out of that, for I, sure. I reckon there's a video that you need to make on what you can do just out of a bomb hole to flat. Yeah. How to learn these things. Basic, well, it's I'm after trying them again. Yeah. yeah. Deal. Let's Done. find one. Hopefully that's helped you out. There we go, there's another weekly Ask GMBN in the back. If you've got any questions, get them in in the comments below. We love answering your questions. Um, I'm going to pick a video to throw oh, to yes. if you don't mind. Yep. I'm actually going to throw you to one on GMBN Tech. Check out my pro bike check on Martin's random tandem Ooh. down there. Don't. That thing is insane. This isn't a riding video, this is all the nitty gritty behind the scenes stuff. It's really cool. Yeah, Don't forget to hit the globe to subscribe because you're missing out on some rad stuff. Yeah. Give us a thumbs up like if you like answering questions. See you later guys.